Welcome to the next project. This is a quick overview of a non-pedestal bench top buffer that I'm putting together. Uh, there's going to be some non-plans uh, for download, so you can take a look at that, do what you want with them. It's not really a how to build this, but it's maybe just to give you some ideas of uh, the bits and pieces that I'm using. So let's get after it and start in the next project. This is a project that started probably over a year ago and was probably needed a couple years before that. I'm not doing a pedestal buffer, but rather a buffer I can clamp to my bench or the tailgate or my table saw or just about anywhere and then take it apart, hide it. Here's a quick description of the parts. We have a 725 RPM motor, quick detach motor mount, a motor base, two and a half inch motor pulley, six inch shaft pulley, a link belt, a shaft or a threaded rod in this case, pillow block bearings, two by four frame rails, three quarter ply base and a cleat, double locking nuts on the end of flanges for the coarse buffs and the fine buffs. And for safety, we've built a shield, which has a little floor to it or a chin. We have a receptacle for the motor and a switch to make it all go zoom. Ideally, I would have a precision shaft with about six inches of right hand threads on one end, six inches of left hand threads on the other end, but I cannot get a uh, machine shop to return my calls since I only need one part. They want to work on bigger jobs, I guess. So I've taken JB Weld and smeared it across uh, the threads, the center area, on a one inch threaded rod. Here I am putting together my quick detach motor mount, which is uh, just half inch plywood. And it will fit on top of a three quarter inch motor base. This is the actual base to the whole thing, which is again some scrap three quarter inch plywood and a couple two by fours for the frame rails. Measuring everything out, trying to make it look nice. Getting all my drill holes roughly in the same place on either side. And this is a cleat in it so I can clamp it in the face vise of my bench. Or I can use it uh, just to clamp anywhere on the bench or on the tailgate of my truck or on my table saw or fill in the blank. Adding a bunch of screws and this will come apart once I get it all done and verified. I'll add glue and then re-screw it all back together. I won't show that part, but just so you know, there is glue added later. Adding pillow block bearings, which I ordered from Amazon. I think I got two of them for $15 or something like that. And I'm using three eighths bolts and there are T-nuts in the bottom side of the two by fours. Initially, I was gonna use just some aluminum flashing tape or duct tape uh, for my shims to uh, make the one inch threaded rod fit in the bearings better. But after doing that, it, the aluminum tape wasn't really holding up very well. So I moved on to a better idea a little bit later, which I'll show you. And here's the link belt. One of the great things about the link belt, if you forget to put the belt on your contraption as you're building it, you don't have to take anything apart. You can just slip the belt in at any time. That's kind of handy. And here's the upgraded shim stock. It was a beer can. Surprisingly, it's about four thousandths of an inch thick. Worked out perfectly. Tasty too. I was 
was done working for the first day, but I was not done working on it. But I decided to fire it up and make sure it all worked. And you can see that the uh, threaded rod, even though this was a straight threaded rod, there's still some wobble in the width of it. So a precision shaft will maybe be an upgrade someday, but this does seem to work. Also, you can see the raw buffs, they're way out of round and not really matched too well to each other, even though they are supposed to be the same size. And here we're taking a look at a quick tear down. Just unplug the motor, roll the belt off the pulleys, spin one thumb bolt or wing bolt loose, slide the motor out of its holder and scoot it across the bench out of the way. Remove one clamp and in this uh, style installation I'm also using a face vise on my bench but I could just use a couple more clamps anywhere else on the bench or my tailgate or wherever. That is one angry brush. And I did this outside just because it is messy. There is white fluff, looked like snow flying everywhere. Actually, it looked a lot like cottonwood seed if you've ever been around a cottonwood tree at a certain time of the year and that white fluff flies all over. Yeah, this is a forest of cottonwoods. It was everywhere. Made the neighbors happy. Yep. They love me. At this point, I'm trimming off all the long fibers that are sticking out. There are a few uh, sewn hems that are within the buff that uh, had some stray fibers sticking out. And I will need to do even more leveling and grooming of these buffs in the future. I did stop a little early. They're not perfectly true to each other yet, but in time, it'll get there. just doing a really quick test run of this whole thing to see how it works and using some glands max polish that I got from Jeskar. I originally sanded, uh, just dry sanded, in the back of a cheap made in somewhere Fender Starcaster. Looks like a Stratocaster. Can I bog it down? Let's find out. Moving on to use some ultra finish or ultra fine uh, finishing compound just to see if I can bring the 600 grit sanding scratches up to a luster. And it did okay, but it's not great. 600 is a bit too coarse to easily polish. All right, giving it a little, little test. Um, got a future project here that I just did a quick dry 600 grit sanding on the back. Um, so it's really not a very good sanding job. Uh, hit it with the medium cut and then the fine cut and it shined up really well, but you can still see some of the 600 grit sanding in it. So now I'm going to uh, do another experiment and hit it with some 1000 grit wet try to get the sanding scratches out and then go through this process again, see what happens. I know a lot of other people do this, but this is a first time for me. I'm uh, old school. I've been using a sidearm grinder style automotive buffer. Um, so I'm stepping up my game a little bit, uh, trying to do something a little different for myself. Well, let's continue to the next project. One thousand grit wet. Test one is over, back to the bench, wet sanded the same area with 1000 grit paper, using the same compounds and testing it again, trying to get a feel for how dangerous or threatening a buffer like this is. One thing that's on my side, this particular guitar has a very heavy, very thick 
poly finish on it. Starting to get the hang of it. So due to the thick finish on this guitar, I don't have to worry too much about uh, buffing through. But it did take a nice shine. And this is just the uh, medium cut compound, not even the fine stuff yet. The fine compound with a thousand grit wet sanding does a pretty nice job. Pretty nice. Well, our buffer project has come along pretty well. It works. I've shown you uh, how I debuff, defluff the buffing wheels, which is messy. I did that outside because it's messy. Uh, we've done a quick test polish um, using 600 dry initially, and then the medium and fine compounds. Then I sanded everything with uh, 1000 grit wet and repeated the process. And honestly, it buffs up really well with 1000 grit wet sand. Uh, this idea is not necessarily mine. I've borrowed ideas from everybody and used a lot of scrap lumber that I had. Three quarter inch plywood for the base and the motor area. Uh, two by fours for the main rails or ribs or whatever they are, um, the support. Uh, a one inch, sorry, one inch threaded rod for the axle or the shaft. Um, pillow block bearings that I got off Amazon. I'm using a two and a half inch pulley at the motor and a six inch pulley at uh, the uh, shaft for the wheels. Uh, the motor is a three quarter horse, 120 volt. Uh, the most expensive part of this is probably the buffs and the flanges for the buffs. I got those from Stumac. Of course, everything from Stumac is expensive. Uh, the motor I did buy new. I think it was between $125, $150 at the time I purchased it. Usually. I'm using a link belt, V-belt on this, and if you build something like this, man, they are the way to go. They run a little smoother, and when you get everything put together and you're like, oh crap, I forgot to put the belt in there, you don't have to take everything apart. You just pop the belt apart, slip it in where you want it, relink the belt, and it's good to go. Idea. There are uh, idea plans uh, that will be in the description, a uh, link to them. Not measured drawings, just an idea and a part list of what I used. And you can take it or leave it if you want to build something like this. Maybe it's a starting point for you. So uh, thanks for sticking with me. Take care of those around you and yourself. And until next time, hang in there. Bye. Thank you again for sticking with me through this video. Please uh, hit the thumbs up button, ring the bell, uh, leave comments. If you haven't done already, please do subscribe. Uh, all those things help YouTube realize that some people like watching this stuff. And I hope uh, everybody that's made it this far has enjoyed what they've seen. Uh, as you know, I have all sorts of projects going on and I'm glad to have you join me and uh, share ideas as we go through these. Take care and see you in the next video. Bye.